Hello, I'm Tracy Grimshaw. Welcome to this special edition of A Current Affair. Ellen DeGeneres has got it all. A top-rating talk show with a global audience of millions, a reported net worth of $100 million and a devoted wife in Aussie actress Portia de Rossi. But it's been a bumpy ride to the top. And as I found out in this rare and candid interview, there's a much more serious side to this very funny woman. Now I was the punchline of every late night talk show. I was made fun of in magazines and it felt horrible at the time. What saved me is me being honest. The thought from a lot of people was she's a lesbian. I mean, these are housewives at home. They're not gonna, she has nothing, they're not gonna relate to her. I think there are a lot of people who still don't get it and still are very, you know, scared of it and fearful and, and, and that's, you know, that's a shame. Yep. Okay ready. guys, she's ready. Affair. Best foot forward, people. <laughs> Pumped, amped, dancing, good to go. And this is a one woman machine. I'm all by myself. from Porsche this is like a big show in Australia so thank you for being here you came all the way here to just to, for this right we flew in this morning well wow you must be exhausted <laughs> no we're okay we're pumped I mean we've been watching your dance we've been watching your show oh, well, thank good. you for having us thanks it's for so being nice here to meet you. nice meeting you Tracy well Australians are very excited to to see what you're going to do what are you going to be doing for us in Australia I don't know yet <laughs> I mean I know I'm going to Sydney and Melbourne not Melbourne but That's, Melbourne yeah, good and uh, I can't wait to to just kind of run around the city and I'm gonna find fun things to do and um, just little tape pieces outside we're gonna do a lot of Twitter hits let people know where we are and play games and and kind of show off that beautiful country and and I mean I've just I've been looking forward to going to Australia my whole life and I can't believe I've never been there so I'm really excited I can't believe it either I mean you, you've married an Australian you have a little piece of Australia in your home with you every single I day. do I do and she, I mean, really, I'm from New Orleans, and she's always talked about how similar Melbourne and uh, New Orleans is. It's, and they do seem very similar in architecture and, mm -hmm. um, and just the feel of it. Just it's a very special place. So I'm just excited about the whole thing. Are there places that Portia wants to show you, special places, like um, where she grew up, for example? Yeah, she's told me about uh, a one pub that she used to go to all the time. And uh, <laughs> so she wants me to go to this pub that she, she loved. And... Um, and just a lot of the, I mean, we've been online looking at different restaurants we're going to go to and a lot of different places, so. Which pub? Uh, I can't say right now. <laughs> <laughs> that, that pub is going to be pretty that crowded. That will be a very, yeah. very happy pub when you two turn up. Yeah. That will be a big surprise. I'll let you know after I'm at the pub. <laughs> yeah. After I leave the pub. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably a wise idea, otherwise you won't be getting out of that pub. Yeah. With 13 Emmy Awards and a reported fortune of $100 million, Ellen has good reason to dance, but she's had to fight for it. In the late 90s, her top-rating sitcom, The Ellen Show, ruled Hollywood for four seasons. Until this. I'm gay. That revelation in 1997 cost her everything. The show was axed amid a chorus of criticism. You've been doing the show for 10 years now, and mm -hmm. I, I guess there's a, a generation, certainly of Australians, given this is going to be seen by an Australian audience, who, who, who don't necessarily know what a rough time you had before you started on this show. That mm -hmm. you were, you know, you, you did a very successful sitcom, you then came out, and then it was cancelled. Has you, this show sort of saved you, do you think, in a way? I think what saved me is me being honest. And I think I, I somehow had the courage to do something and say something that I knew would would possibly end my career and um, instead of making business more important I made my soul and my my life more important and I think by by being truthful and by being honest that saved me and then I was given the opportunity to do something where I could actually just be myself and people could see who I am and if they respond to it great and if they don't great 
and they've responded. So. The, sh <laughs> the show's been... Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the show has been incredibly successful. It, it, you don't seem to have changed, so do you think that... Uh, I mean, given that you were criticised at, at the time that the sitcom was cancelled, do you think that the world has changed? Do you think that world attitude has changed? Um, yes, yeah, certainly. I think the, I think there are a lot of people that are um, are are more. Uh, you know, it, it's hard because you know you grow up. I grew up in the South. I grew up in New Orleans, and and I grew up with a lot of. Um, it was very racist, you know, when I grew up. And so when you grow up and you hear certain things and, you, and you're just, as a kid, you, you just kind of grow up thinking, well, that's the way those people are and that's the way that, you know, and you just, you learn from adults. And I think that I had to step back and look, you know, at the world with my eyes, not somebody else's, not somebody else telling me what, what you know, who someone was, but what I thought. And... I think more and more people now are kind of stepping back instead of being, you know, raised in a certain way and and taught to think a certain way. And more and more people are saying that's wrong and that's not okay to think that way and, and judge people and people should be who they are. And I think more and more people are doing that. And I, but I also think that there's a large number a number of people who don't approve of who I am and don't understand it. And I can't really do anything about that. I can't. I wish I could. I wish I could make people see that, you know, it's it, it, you know, there's nothing wrong with being different than who you are. Um, but that's that's their journey and their time to get that. But I think there are a lot of people who still don't get it and still are very, you know, scared of it and fearful. And 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 that's you know, that's a shame. But I think I think that um, I think the show when I first started, there were a lot of people who did not want to buy the show. By the way, it was not an instant, like, let's put her on the air. You know, it was, I mean, you know, initially, I think the, the thought from a lot of people, um, station managers, was she's a lesbian. I mean, these are housewives at home. They're not going to, she has nothing, they're not going to relate to her. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of fear of who, you know, who, what, what, what is my show going to be about? Like, I was just going to, you know, wave a rainbow flag around or something <laughs> like, you know, I, I don't know what they thought, but... You know, I said, I'm just going to be me. I've, I've always been me. You just happen to know more about me now. And that's all that, you know, the difference is. But it took a, people a while to realize that I wasn't on some kind of, you know, agenda or, you know, something. So it was not, you know, this was not an easy sell. Do you carry any resentment from that time? I'm furious. Um, <laughs> you, you were cranky at the time, though. And I, oh, and I, I was furious at yeah. the time. Yeah. You know, because, you know, when you're new, when you all of a sudden are like, you know, I, I just felt like I was, uh, and it was my own fault. I kind of felt like I was stuck, you know, living my life the way, and then if I, if I, you know, how dare they not like me anymore just because I suddenly revealed the truth of, you know, who I am in one aspect of my life. Not, you know, it's just, I'm just saying I'm gay. That's all I was saying. And, um, and I was so mad. I was so mad that I lost, you know, my show. I lost, not, not just my show, but like nobody wanted to hire me for three years. I, I didn't have any offers. No, I mean, literally the phone did not ring for three, three years. And, and I had no money. I was out of money. I was just so, that tends to make people cranky. And, uh, <laughs> And then, you know, I just kind of, and it was good. It was, it was actually, I'm very grateful for that time. I'm very grateful that I got to experience. It gave me more compassion. I know what it feels like to be out of money. I know what it feels like to be up and high and like, you know, I was in a top rated sitcom and very successful and pe people treated me very well. And then all of a sudden, just because of one revelation, I just was, I was the joke every, you know, I was the punchline of every late night talk show. I was made fun of in magazines. I was, it was, and it felt horrible at the time. And now I look back and I'm so grateful for it because it, it really gave me a chance to examine myself and say, who are you without fame? Who are you without success? Who are you without money? And I, I kind of found different parts of me that would not have grown had I not experienced that. If someone had shown you a crystal ball, say, you know, in 1998 when things were not so great for you, and said, this is what your life's going to be like now. What would you have said about that? I would have said it was, a, it was not a uh, 
crystal ball that was real. <laughs> I would have said it was, you know, fantasy in there because I never, I never could have imagined my life going on, especially in a direction that it's gone. I really just thought I was going to go back to stand up and just tour and do stand up. And then out of nowhere, Finding Nemo came along. When life gets you down, you know what you got to do? I don't want to know what you got to do. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. What do we do? We swim, swim. Dorino singing. Oh, 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 I love to swim. And he wrote that fish for me. He wrote Dory for me. And, um, and then this show came along, and it just kind of took off. And, and I think it, it, it just reminds me that no matter how much we think we have control over things and we think that we can guide our, our lives the way we think that they can, you know, go, we, we really have, we have some control over it. We can choose to, to do things rather than not do things. But I think what's meant to be is, is going to happen. And I think I trust that now. And that's why I think I've let go, too, because I used to care so much about what people think thought of me. I, I used to care if people liked me. And I still, I want people to like me. I still care about that, but I know that I have no control over it. I know that I just can be myself. I can just be completely, I'm, I'm a good person. I'm a kind person. I'm a gentle person. I live my life in a, in a kind way, and that's all I can do. And as long as I go to sleep at night and I, I know I've done, you know, the best I can, that's all I can do. talk about the show I mean I was talking to some of your audience before the show today and uh, I asked them what they love about you and what they said unanimously was your energy and your dancing mm -hmm. where did the dancing start it really started as such a ridiculous accident it was kind of you know when I even when I did my sitcom when I was introduced to the audience before we would tape the show I just have always loved music and I always love to dance. I mean, how do you not dance when you hear music? That's mm. just sort of who I am. When I hear music, I dance. And then it became where I would dance into the audience and and, and then it, it just kind of, I, I saw the audience respond to it in a way that it freed them up to, to just dance with me. And I think people come here almost, uh, it doesn't really matter who's on the show, it's just a place to let go and be free. And I mean, everyone in this audience is, you know, a stranger to the other. People are from all over the world and they come here, it's daytime, it's, it's you know, it's not dark in here, they're not drunk as far as I know. <laughs> they may be, I don't know, but, and, and they're all dancing. And you know, people just stop dancing. I think people grow up and they stop playing games, they stop playing hide and seek, they stop, you know, we just grow up and we get so serious and stop playing and we stop dancing and, and you know, we get busy with our lives and the only time we dance is maybe at a wedding and maybe if we're drunk and maybe if there's 20 other people out there and, you know, nobody goes to clubs anymore and so it's a place to just, you know, and, and to me dancing represents just freedom and letting go and having fun and being a kid again. So I think that's why they respond to it and that's why I do it. Your humour is very kind and I know one of the, the themes on the program right now is, is be kind. Um, is that because of what you've been through? Because, you know, comedy is very often about poking fun at people. Yeah, it you is. You don't do that, do you? No, I don't. I, I, because I think, because, well, I never did. Even before, the, even before, you know, me being made fun of, um, I, I just never thought, I always think of, when I, when I tell a joke, when, I, when I'm talking about something, I think about someone in the audience or someone at home watching and experiencing that thing that I, if it would be mean, if it would be mean-spirited or directed at someone, I don't ever want anyone to get hurt by what I'm saying. Because I think people, people should, anyway, laugh to feel better and to forget about stuff that's going on in the world and not to laugh at someone else's expense or um, in, it's just mean-spirited. It's just mean to, and I don't think people realize it because they're so used to hearing a joke being mean-spirited or at someone else's expense that they don't, but I had a chance to stop and look at it because I, I was the joke. Um, but I just, I think being, when I say be kind to one another, I think um, I just want people to, Maybe it'll seep in, and because I think people are 
rude sometimes, and I think people are unkind, and I think people don't pay attention to, to someone else's feelings. And I think there's a lot of kids out there that are bullied, there's, you know, in, in all kinds of ways. And I think that needs to stop. And I think adults need to know that they're doing the same thing. It's not just kids. There are adults that are out there bullying, and they need to be kind. Have you ever had a conversation like that with someone like Joan Rivers, for example, who's a very successful comedian mm -hmm. and quite mean? Mm -hmm. Do you talk to her about that stuff? I'm now? scared of her. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never talked to I mean, I know Joan, and, she, you know, I've, I haven't seen her for years, but that's just who she is, and that's how she grew up, and, and I, you know, but that's the antithesis of who I am. Mm -hmm. You are the face of Swiss vitamins, you're the face of Covergirl Cosmetics, you do this show every day which we've seen is high energy. How long can you keep that up? Um, I don't know, we'll see. I mean if my knees hold out, I'm, I, uh, <laughs> I'm really, I, seriously, I just started working out with this guy and I'm feeling so much better about myself and it's just been a couple of weeks but I, I really feel like as long as I take care of myself and as long as, you know, I, I, I can't tell you, I mean, and I say it to people, this, this energy i mean you can feel it in here mm -hmm. you, and you've talked to you know people come from very very far away they they fly here they make you know uh, plans to this is their vacation or their trip and and they come in here and bring this positive energy and this love and this joy and i get to feel that every single day it's the most amazing feeling that that energy is coming at me every day and i and i hope i give it back to them and i hope they get that and i think if i do that every single day and i keep I, it, I feel like I have a purpose. I feel like I am... It's why I started out as a comedian. I started out to make people happy and make people feel good. And I'm doing it on a larger scale. And, and I think if... if uh, I hope I can do this for a long, long, long time. Yeah. I can't wait. Thanks so much, Ellen. Thanks. I can't wait. I'll, I'll see you there. I hope so. That'll All be terrific. right. Thank okay. you so much. Bye. All right. That was great. I hope you enjoyed that interview as much as we enjoyed doing it. And for the chance to win one of five trips for two to see The Ellen Show in L.A., jump onto the website that's on your screen now.